Hello and welcome. Thank you everybody for joining. My name is Kieran Saker with Meraki and I'm very excited to have all of you here today for a discussion of cloud networking in educational environments. And I'm also very excited to introduce our guest, Steve Bartlett, who is the technology supervisor for Bremerton School District up in Washington State. Uh, Steve, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm glad to be here today. Now, uh, we have a, a lot of material to cover, so I'm going to dive right in here. Um, by way of agenda, I'm going to start off with a brief introduction to Meraki and uh, Meraki's technology platform for those of you in the audience who are less familiar with our company. And then uh, turn our attention to Bremerton's network. We're going to, or Steve is going to share uh, some of his experiences deploying a, a cloud managed wireless network and uh, some of the applications he's using wireless for uh, on the campuses. We're then going to flip away from the PowerPoint slides and uh, take a look at a live demo of Steve's network. Then I'm going to wrap up with a very brief overview of Meraki's product line and then open up the floor to questions and answers, uh, both for uh, Steve as well as the Meraki team. Uh, we do have a number of members of the Meraki team online with us today, so if you have questions at any point during the presentation, please feel free to ask them over the text chat interface. And we'll be answering a number of those questions in real time during the presentation, as well as reserving some for a uh, group discussion at the end. And uh, recording of today's presentation as well as slides will be available at meraki.com slash webinar within the next few days. Now, uh, a brief introduction uh, to Meraki for those of you who are less familiar with the company. Uh, Meraki is the, the recognized leader in cloud networking. Uh, we have over 18,000 customer networks worldwide, and these uh, are range in shape and size from uh, large enterprises to schools, universities, small medium businesses, restaurants, etc. And uh, we've really been focused on innovation since day one, with a strong focus in R&D and technology. There's a lot of information available about the technology platform and the, and the company from third parties. Uh, Gardner's Magic Quadrant Report, uh, Network World, Tech World, etc. Uh, so if you're interested in getting a third party perspective about Meraki and our technology, do a quick Google search. There's a lot of information out there for, from analysts and reviewers. Uh, now, uh, Meraki has worked with hundreds of educational institutions, uh, both colleges and universities, as well as K-12 school districts. And uh, we've had the, the pleasure of working with organizations of very different sizes, both uh, large districts uh, all the way down to smaller independent schools. And I'm going to talk about some of the, the, the best practices and uh, tips and tricks that apply to organizations kind of across the educational spectrum. Now, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, Meraki is the leader in cloud networking, which is a new network architecture that many of these schools are deploying. Let's take a moment and talk about why these schools are looking at an alternative architecture for the network in the first place. It turns out that when we talk to our customers that they're seeing very new dynamics on their campuses and the networks today look very differently from what they looked like uh, 10 or even five years ago. Most obviously is the proliferation of devices. The movement from desktops and uh, static computer labs to laptop environments, uh, carts on wheels, and of course uh, smart devices like iPads, iPod touches, iPhones, etc. And so the number of devices on the network and the diversity of devices is increasing very, very rapidly. We're also seeing a movement to web applications, both applications used within the classroom, like Google Apps, for example, as well as recreational apps like Netflix and Hulu and YouTube and BitTorrent that can uh, really suck bandwidth. And what we're finding is that, that network performance is now a prerequisite for application and finally, students, faculty, and staff are, are, want to be able to access their, no, their network from everywhere, not just from a computer lab, but from their classrooms, from cafeterias, from quads. And if you take these three trends and put them together, it paints a, an awesome picture for end users. We have these 
really cool web apps that we can use from our neat new devices and access them anywhere. But this can uh, put strain on uh, IT, especially with a traditional network environment. Some of the questions we see our customers asking when they're looking to deploy our products is, how do I support 10 times more devices but without adding support staff? How do I keep BitTorrent and these new high bandwidth applications from slowing down my uh, apps that are critical for the classroom? And how do I make sure that with all of these new devices coming on the network that it remains secure? Now, networks are faced with very new challenges today and we can look to technology as a, a way to accommodate these challenges and move past them. And when we look at the cloud specifically, we see that over the last several years, it's really transformed a number of industries. If we look at what Amazon Web Services has done for servers and storage and data center, if we look at what Google Apps and Salesforce.com have done for applications and how much easier it is to deploy these applications now, uh, what we continually ask ourselves at Meraki is, how can the cloud transform networking? When we look at, at the cloud as a, as a technology platform and how it's transformed various parts of IT, we see that when it's deployed correctly in the right applications you know, for the right environments, it does three major things. It increases manageability. It increases scalability, meaning that we can have a small deployment or a large deployment and seamlessly move between them without uh, giving up our ease of use without uh, giving up our features. And then finally, the ability to save cost, uh, not only CapEx, but also ongoing operational expenses. But really, if you, if you sum it up, we found that when used correctly, the cloud can increase IT efficiency. And uh, that is what we are uh, aiming to accomplish at Meraki with our technology platform. So today, we have a uh, broad uh, product portfolio ranging from wireless LAN to, to routers and security appliances that are 100% managed from the cloud. So uh, I've used the term cloud uh, probably a dozen times already this morning, and uh, many of you are probably scratching your heads and saying, what the heck does Kieran mean by cloud networking? And sure enough, cloud is a term that gets used uh, in a lot of different contexts and a lot of environments and can mean very different things to, to different people and in different applications. Well, a cloud controlled network looks something like this. We have Meraki hardware that we design, manufacture, and sell that you can deploy in your environments, wireless access points, routers, etc. And each of these pieces of hardware connects over the internet to Meraki's data centers. We have a number of data centers around the world, and it's these data centers that are responsible for monitoring and managing and configuring your network. So things like uh, traditional hardware-based wireless LAN controllers are eliminated. Overlay management appliances are eliminated. Uh, overlay management software is eliminated. All of that uh, extra stuff, all the stuff that isn't directly responsible for moving around the bits and bytes, is pulled out of your network and into our cloud where you don't have to worry about it. Now, uh, those of you who have deployed a traditional on-site wireless controller, for example, uh, before are probably thinking about taking all of that and putting it in the cloud and tunneling all of that traffic back through the cloud uh, it sounds like a, a questionable architecture. And you'd, you'd certainly be right. Um, what we've done is actually develop a very different architecture wherein the data does not actually flow through Meraki's cloud. It doesn't flow through a controller of any kind. Instead, your network traffic flows directly from uh, a wireless access point or from a router uh, to its destination. Your data stays on your network and it does not flow through Meraki's cloud. Instead, all of the Meraki hardware is connected with a very lightweight SSL connection to Meraki's cloud. And that connection, which is only about a kilobit per second, is used for management, monitoring, statistics, reporting, uh, real-time tools, et cetera, 
but none of the network traffic, none of the user data actually flows to the cloud. And so this architecture has three major benefits uh, over, say, a traditional wireless LAN controller. Uh, first, it's very scalable. There's no centralized bottleneck or choke point. If you want to add more capacity, just hang another access point on the wall, and you added uh, capacity to your network. Secondly, it's very reliable. There's no central point of failure. So uh, Meraki's data centers, for example, are spread around the world, and every one of our customers is serviced by multiple data centers in different parts of the world. So for example, if there's a, a major earthquake or power failure or something like that, the service will simply migrate to another part of the world, and uh, your network picks up where it left off. And that's, that's a type of high availability and geographic redundancy that you get right out of the box. It's baked into the platform. It's also worth noting that if you lose connectivity to our cloud for any reason, let's say you have uh, your ISP is having uh, routing issues or what have you, uh, your network continues to function. Users can authenticate, they can send traffic, uh, they can access local network resources. The only thing that would be interrupted is the ability to make configuration changes and access management tools. So it's very reliable, uh, unlike something like Google Apps, for example, where if you lose connectivity to the, the cloud, you completely lose access to the service. With Meraki's cloud networking architecture, your network continues to function, even if your connectivity is interrupted. Uh, finally, it's very secure. Because your data send, stays on your network, you don't have to worry about your uh, data passing through uh, our cloud. I mean, it's fully HIPAA and PCI compliant. Now, finally, on the architectural side, uh, moving the management complexity to the cloud has let us completely rethink the user interface of uh, configuring and managing and running a network. And we've moved all of the management into a web-based application that uh, allows us to have some, some very sophisticated services like policy-based firewalls, application-based quality of service, location, et cetera, yet we can deploy it very quickly and easily, and uh, most importantly, without specialized training. So uh, you don't have to sacrifice your staff for, for two weeks while they're off getting trained. Uh, it's very, very easy to get up and running, and we'll take a look at this uh, in the flesh when we go to our live demo in just a few minutes. Now, uh, I hope that helped to give a, a, a nice overview of the, the, the technology architecture and a little bit of history behind the company. Um, now what I'd like to do is to introduce Steve, who is technology supervisor at uh, Bremerton School District, and who has been using this technology platform for uh, a little over a year now. And we're going to learn a little bit about Steve's network and some of his experiences. So, Steve, once again, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. I'm very glad to be here. Um, yeah, I guess just to start rolling, um, to you know, for the sake of time. Um, again, my name is Steve Bartlett. Uh, I have been uh, the director here at Bremerton School District for about uh, three years. Um, before that, I was a technician in the field here in the district for about ten years. So I've got a hey, long. Uh, Steve, uh, sorry to interrupt you. Before you continue, could you just turn the uh, input volume up a little bit on your microphone? You're you're coming out a bit soft. Is that a little bit better for you guys? That's great. Thank you so much. Okay, so I've been here at our district for about uh, about 13 years. Um, I am a parent in this district with three kids in the district, so I, I kind of approach how we use technology in our district with a with a vested interest not only as a as a uh, director of technology, but as a child that will be directly affected by technology use in our our district. Um, our district right now, we uh, we actually have uh, five elementaries now. Uh, one is a uh, one is an additional early learning center. Um, have a middle school and a high school with about 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 5,500 students. Um, as you know, using you in education know that kind of uh, flexes over time. Um, the alternative high school and uh, an Alliance Academy, which is another alternative off-site uh, kind of digital um, program that we run. Um, currently, uh, as the slide indicates, we have uh, one network manager and I have four computer techs. Um, we're a very very small operation. Um, we currently have about so. 1,800 computers, um, 
but along with that, we, uh, from a deployment standpoint, we have been pushing out mobile devices to our uh, sites, and we have uh, roughly 580 uh, iOS devices now in student hands um, at the elementary levels. So. So can you tell us a little bit about the, the wireless system that was, uh, was in place when you joined the district? We, uh, when we first had our wireless, we put in a wireless system uh, when we did a uh, voice over IP deployment. We were looking to go with a consistent architecture uh, across, you know, with a single vendor, kind of a single point of uh, contact if we had any kind of failures. At the time, uh, we went with the 3Com switching architecture, voice over IP, and their wireless solution, which at the, at the time was a, a rebranded um, trapeze, um, independent controller. Uh, we had a controller at each site. We had uh, about 10 access points per site. Uh, and it was very challenging. Um, we had a, had a lot of problems at the time. We couldn't get more than one or two devices per access point before we started seeing bottlenecks, um, connection issues, uh, authentication issues, and just programming. Uh, every time we did an update, uh, we had to send an, uh, another tech out to training um, to just be able to, to manage it. And it became a very time intensive uh, product. It also was a product that became very untrusted. We, yeah, we, we would say we had wireless, but our usage was very low because our staff just said, you know, it's not even worth trying anymore to authenticate or use the wireless in any reliable manner, um, which was, for our department, very disheartening. We were really trying to provide additional services to our, to our teachers and students. So uh, I understand that there were a number of technology initiatives that started to take place that made wireless a uh, growing priority for you. Can you talk about what some of those were? You already touched on the fact that you're deploying iOS devices. There yeah, I'm going to well? kind of reverse order here. Uh, well, one of the things that we had is we wanted to, we have a computerized point of sale system for all of our cafeterias. We uh, were wanting to make that a little bit more mobile for our cafeteria people so they could re re readjust lines without us having to bring in a contractor or have one of my guys relay uh, uh, cabling to wherever they wanted to be able to check out and have the kids line up. That was, we wanted to create a fluid environment that they could change as per the school needs. We also had an administrative uh, yeah, yeah, action where they were trying to use iPads and laptops and other mobile devices to better interact with classrooms and go to a more paperless uh, meeting system so we could try to save pennies wherever we could. And the big draw for me, and uh, the number one here on the slide, was we had been hearing about using iPod touches in classrooms. Um, we had worked with a, a couple school districts up here in Oregon and also one in California and uh, we had initially deployed uh, a, th a three cart system and we ran it for a, a little bit on our old system and then when we switched over to Meraki uh, we saw a huge increase but what we really wanted to do is put a mobile device with a protected and secure wireless connection in all of our elementary kids' hands from a from third grade on through sixth. Uh, we've seen, we've been using that um, for reading fluency, math apps to practice uh, math, math fluency, uh, memorization, rote memorization instead of working on paper skills or using an interactive device. Uh, we, we are in a district with a lot of money. We, we knew we couldn't go one-to-one -one laptops or do any of the really fancy initiatives that we've, we've seen across the country but a, a $200 uh, iOS device in their hands we felt could really, really engage these kids, get these kids excited. Um, we, we are a extremely low poverty school. Most of our schools are 75% free and reduced. Um, most of them don't have access to technology. We have a very transient population as uh, most of our students are, are children of, uh, of sailors in the Navy. Um, so the, we wanted to be able to really give them a good, interactive, engaging experience um, to excite them to come to school. Um, and we knew that in order for this to work, to make that device really be that engaging device, we had to be able to provide wireless connectivity so they could uh, practice apps between each other, get on the internet to do research in the middle of lessons, um, submit, uh, submit reports to their teacher, to their parents and via email. 
And so it really became key that we couldn't use our existing wireless infrastructure because, again, more than three or four even mobile devices on on the network would uh, they would stop authenticating. And we were talking about putting 30 uh, iPods per classroom. I see. So uh, you decided to upgrade to upgrade to 802.11n to, to uh, a more robust system. And uh, I understand you you did a pretty thorough evaluation and, and looked at a number of vendors. Can you talk a little bit about what what was important to you in selecting the system and, and how that evaluation process worked out? We uh, we initially started, I, I believe this was a year and a half ago, uh, almost two years now. We brought in uh, Cisco, Aruba, Ruckus, Motorola. I think those were the main big vendors we brought in. And we actually had them come out, had engineers set up test classrooms, and we were able to roll carts in there, roll carts of, of laptops, other mobile devices. And really, I didn't want to make a quick decision and say, hey, you know, just because we buy their switches, we want to, uh, you know, buy their wireless product. We really wanted to make sure that this was going to meet our needs, going to fit into our profile of being a very low staff uh, environment and provide the, the mobile access that we, we expected uh, for our cars to operate in the classrooms. And it was about a six month process. We, we, we put each of them through the ringer, um, from Rocky all the way to Cisco, uh, had, took a real careful look at the antenna, did a lot of research. Um, and really at the end of the day when the dust settled, uh, for us, Meraki was, was a very, very clear winner. You know, there's a lot of arguments that we found, um, you know, especially you get some finger pointing when you start looking at a lot of major vendors of, of what technology is better, what hardware is better, and what, what our, in our experience for what our motivation was to get a wireless, we found that the, the, the hardware in N, especially in the 16s, in the, in the 14s at the time, and now the MR24s, was, was really great. Uh, we were getting the penetration through the old buildings that we needed to cover uh, areas. But the clear winner over everything, uh, above and beyond uh, the price and the hardware, was uh, you know channeling my inner uh, uh, late night infomercial. Is we were able to uh, set it and forget it. We don't have the, the the time to to send someone out for two weeks every time an update came up, and we had to be able to operate basically repairing anything that plugs in in our network. And so you, we don't have a lot of time to spend having a specialist that spends all their time with wireless. Uh, I would love to have that, but it, it just isn't, wasn't, isn't in the cards. So the, the clear winner of managing and maintaining and monitoring from, from not only at my desk, but from remotely with a, with a mobile device, Rocky was fantastic. They were the simplest to set up. Uh, they sent us the devices out. They were the they were the it was the only product that we were able to set up and get running without any intervention in the beginning from a, a technician from the country or from the company. Um, the the dual band was 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 fantastic. Our devices connected up, and we were able to get the most mobile devices connected on uh, on the uh, the uh, Meraki APs. The other thing that I really liked um, was that when we went got down to talking price, which schools focus on that really quick, is that the the uh, the, the quotes came in very easy to read. I wasn't looking at a uh, quote for a, a a controller that had you know seven other line items for different plugins that I needed. I knew right away when I looked at the Meraki quote that I what I exactly what I was buying. I was buying a, a, an AP and a license. And I knew that all the technology that they had to offer, which is a very expansive suite and, and offers the same features as anything else out there, um, I was I knew exactly what I was paying for. I didn't have to worry about oh, you know, do if I had another access point, do I need to pay this much more to, so I can get um, management, uh, you know, traffic shaping or application management? It's very simple, um, and and, and it, that really fits. I I think with our goal here at the school district to be very simple, straightforward, and let's get the job done and get it done well. I see. So uh, so that was very helpful information on kind of the, the, the selection process, the motivation, how you went about choosing a, a vendor. Um, so now you've, you've been on the platform for uh, a little over a year. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how the, uh, how the wireless system has performed? Um, and also, you know, some of the results that you're seeing 
with the uh, the use of the iOS devices in the classroom. I know there's been some pretty exciting developments on the, the non-technical side there in terms of how uh, uh, how the students have been progressing. So based on now rolling out and having this for a year, what we've been finding is we finally have a network that people trust. Uh, we see our users actually using their laptops. We see the users using their mobile devices throughout the throughout our environment and and really being able to be mobile with with the educational process um, one of the things uh, Kieran touched on with with our our iPod carts uh, we had an initial roll out of three uh, once we had the Meraki backbone on that we saw significant increases and uh, I'll tell you what it's really amazing to walk into a classroom and see 30 kids engaged and excited in the educational process wirelessly communicating back and forth wirelessly challenging each other both in reading and in math and writing um, and, and communication skills um, a lot of people we had parents wondering you know how are they developing communication skills if they're if they're engaged in a, in a mobile device uh, they were it really prompts them to learn to write better compose sentences uh, challenging each other the math facts the games was was just phenomenal um, we we posted results of 20% increases in reading. One classroom that was really heavily focused on math, we saw 20% increases in math scores. And one of the underlying technologies that made us that allowed us to get this in there and roll this out was was a strong wireless network to support that infrastructure. Um, what's great is as we've deployed out and have deployed uh, 15 more additional carts this year, um, we are able to just hang an access point wherever we need it and expand that out to cover the entire schools. We're actually able to very easily pull up the management um, dashboard, see into the visibility, really watch what's going on, see where we're seeing bottlenecks, see where we're seeing problems, run the logs. You know, I've been really monitoring actually what kind of web applications they're using in the classroom on their devices. So it's, it's just really neat to be able to see what's going on. Well, um, on that note, let's take a, a little break from the slides and take a look at the actual network. Um, so I just flipped from the slides to a web browser, and I, here I'm logged into the uh, Meraki dashboard. This is the uh, user interface, the, the web application that one would use to manage their network. And this is the overview summary for the Bremerton School District. So we can see uh, each of these clusters of green dots represents one of the campuses. Each green dot itself is, in fact, uh, a wireless access point. And uh, they're all overlaid on a, on a Google map. Uh, Google is actually one of the uh, investors in, in Meraki, and we've uh, integrated with their maps product. You can also upload your own uh, custom maps, floor plans, etc. And uh, this gives us a nice high-level overview summary of the network. We can see where the APs are. Each of the numbers indicates how many users has uh, uh, associated to an access point recently. We can see overall bandwidth. Um, if there was a problem with one of the access points, it would appear as uh, yellow or red. Uh, each of the APs, regardless of whether you've got one or 10,000, they're, they're all being monitored automatically from Meraki's cloud. And these all appear green, which means that they are healthy. So as we were mentioning, we have these, these access points overlaid on a, a map. And uh, we can very easily drill down into one of these to learn more about the hardware on the network. So uh, for example, here we can look at this one individual access point. Uh, this can be anywhere in the world. We can see it right over the web. We have. Uh, basic information, MAC address, etc., IP address, uh, as well as a, a, a bunch of real-time information that's being streamed to us uh, through the cloud and onto our browser. So here we're seeing real-time uh, bandwidth utilization from this access point. We're seeing in real-time which clients are associated to this AP right now. We can see how long they've been associated for, the signal strength, etc. Uh, we can see the monitoring metrics. I mentioned that each of the APs is being monitored 24-7 from the cloud. Uh, we can see connectivity, gateway usage, latency, what have you. Uh, and we can run a number of, of real-time tools on these access points, uh, looking at channel utilization, 
we can run tools like uh, Traceroute or uh, ping tests. And here, you know, for example, running a ping, we can actually send a ping from our cloud to the access point and verify that there's a healthy round trip uh, internet connection to uh, uh, to uh, the, the hardware and back, making sure that the ISP is healthy and all of the upstream network infrastructure, switch, router, et cetera, is working properly. You can see latency, loss rate, et cetera. Uh, now, in addition to all this information about the, the access points, uh, Steve was alluding to some of the information about the, the clients themselves. And uh, there's a lot of very rich visibility to how the network is being used. You know, as, uh, as users associate to the network, that information is stored in an online database in the cloud that's then available for you as an administrator to flip through. Right. Now, uh, in addition to just scrolling through the, this big list, it's also indexed, so we can search it very quickly. And I can search, for example, for iPad, see all the iPads on the network. And uh, so you can see we've got uh, 25 iPads here on the Meraki network. Uh, now, you'll notice that I, I search for iPad, not for a, a MAC address or an IP range. Uh, I can also search, for example, for a name. Search for my own name, Kieran, and uh, we can see my, both my my old MacBook Air, which has uh, bit the dust and therefore hasn't been used in, in just about a week, as well as my new one. Uh, I'm able to search for my name because of a pretty interesting technology. We call it client fingerprinting. Um, client fingerprinting is a way in which the wireless access points are actually analyzing traffic as it's flowing over the wireless network and gleaning pieces of infor identifying information. Uh, NetBIOS, Bonjour, DHCP fingerprints, uh, radius, etc., lets us very easily uh, drill down and find clients. I can search for Kieran, I can search for uh, Brian, who's online with us answering questions through the chat interface. We can see Brian's iMac, uh, Brian's MacBook Air, etc. And uh, great for troubleshooting. In addition to names, types of devices like iPad, uh, we can search for operating systems, uh, OS 10, see the OS 10 machines. XP, see the Windows XP machines, etc. So very easy to understand what types of devices you're using in the network. Now, just as we can fingerprint applications, we can also, uh, pardon me, just as we can fingerprint devices, we can also fingerprint applications. And we see that in this pie chart here. I mouse over it and I can see uh, software and antivirus updates, uh, YouTube traffic, etc. I can click on, on more details here and there are actually hundreds of applications that are being fingerprinted here. And it makes it very easy to see, uh, look, how much Dropbox traffic is on the network, how much online backup, how much video, et cetera. And uh, if, I, if I click on one of these, Dropbox, for example, we can see that uh, uh, Dropbox is being used in, in a kind of bursty fashion here. Dropbox, the online backup service, of course. Um, and here we see, for example, one user has used uh, 32 gigabytes of Dropbox. And if I click on this user, uh, we can see information about this client, where it is in real time. We can see their, their location. We can uh, see their signal strength, etc. And as you see, the vast majority of this user's traffic is, in fact, Dropbox. Uh, it's also, likewise, very easy to control applications themselves. And we can do that in our uh, firewall and traffic shaping configuration. So we, we have a number of SSIDs, or virtual wireless networks. Uh, here we're looking at our, our guest Wi-Fi network, which is a virtual network using the same hardware and infrastructure as our secure network for employees. And in our firewall settings, we are denying local LAN settings. And that means that users on the guest network can't access our LAN, they can't access file shares, they can't access other computers on the network, they can't spread viruses, etc. And with this simple checkbox here, they're completely isolated. Um, we also have them uh, being served IP addresses directly from the DHCP server built into the wireless LAN. So we don't even need to set up our DHCP, uh, they're being served uh, NATed addresses right from the access point. Now, we don't want to necessarily give them uh, free reign to s consume all of the bandwidth on the network. 
So here we've set a bandwidth limit on video and music with a uh, half a megabit down and just a uh, hundred K up. Now this rule applies to a number of different video applications, YouTube, Netflix, Hulu, etc. We can define our rules more narrowly if we'd like. For example, we could just limit Hulu. Uh, we could also limit applications like peer-to-peer, uh, uh, -peer, for example. Now, interestingly, peer-to-peer -peer is an application that uses no well-known hosts, no well-known ports, uh, but because the system is actually identifying the applications using layer seven traffic inspection, we can even uh, limit applications like encrypted BitTorrent. Now, uh, if we want to, we can go a step further and actually block these applications altogether with our layer seven firewall rules. For example, creating a peer-to-peer -peer layer seven firewall rule that blocks it altogether. This is the type of functionality you might get out of a, a Palo Alto Networks appliance or a similar dedicated layer seven firewall built right in. So a little bit on the, the firewall and application management. Um, there are many other areas of the product that, that we could talk about. Um, we have, uh, of course, our, our access control settings that lets us define SSIDs, integrate with our Active Directory server, et cetera, uh, radio management settings, um, summary reports, and what have you. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have time for uh, an exhaustive tour of the system, but wanted to give you just a, a quick uh, overview of what it's like to configure and manage uh, a network right over the web. So now what, what I'd like to do is just very quickly give an overview of Meraki's product line and uh, pricing model to, to give you a sense of what type of, of hardware and software packages we offer. And then I know that there are a number of questions for Steve, so I want to make sure that we leave plenty of time for those. Uh, Meraki has three wireless access points in our indoor line. Uh, these range from a, a top of the line 900 megabit per second radio rate three stream dual radio access point, the MR24. Uh, this is the, the fastest available 802.11n technology. Uh, and then they, they scale down to a single radio access point, which is uh, available at a, a very economical price and is fantastic for low density, less performance critical environments where, uh, where uh, value is the primary concern. Uh, and of course, is the MR16, which is a great compromise between the two. All three of these access points have uh, enterprise class chipsets, power over ethernet, voice and video optimization, really uh, high quality hardware platforms. But what's uh, most exciting about them is how they're deeply integrated with our enterprise cloud controller. That is the web-based management service that we uh, saw in the demo. And the, the hardware is actually built specifically to work with the cloud-based management. Um, and that's what lets us have a fully integrated experience from the hardware uh, to the management and software, how it all works cohesively. In addition to our three indoor access points, we also have three outdoor APs. Again, uh, a value-oriented, a high-performance, and the middle-of-the-road product. Uh, these are great if you want to extend coverage out to quads, playgrounds, football fields, et cetera. I've heard of a number of athletic teams now using wireless devices as part of their training. Great to be able to offer that service in outdoor environments as well. They're tested against shock, dust, vibration, and of course, they're fully waterproof. We also have a line of, excuse me, a, a line of cloud-managed routers as well that provide uh, branch connecti gateway connectivity as well as uh, application firewall services, uh, SIPA compliant content filtering, and uh, other types of services that we need to manage the wide area network that complement the wireless LAN products. Um, Steve talked a little bit about pricing. I won't go into too much detail around our pricing model, but I think there are a couple points worth uh, mentioning. First is, is architecturally, Moving the wireless management and the network management and complexity to the cloud uh, has intrinsic cost savings benefits. We eliminate a lot of infrastructure. For example, there's no hardware controller to buy and deploy on the network. That saves a significant amount. 
Um, the lack of training and the speed of installation means that we don't need to add staff to our team. We can deploy these new network technologies with the staff we typically have today. And Steve talked about the what the quote looks like for Meraki. It's typically uh, one line item for hardware, one line item for licenses. We try to keep it as simple as possible without per user licenses, per feature licenses. And we even include a lifetime warranty and uh, maintenance and support as part of our single license. So uh, collectively, we see an infrastructure savings uh, typically between 30 and 50% moving from a traditional wireless LAN architecture with a, a hardware-based controller, et cetera, uh, to a cloud-managed model. Um, that's just on the hardware itself. The savings in training, downtime, et cetera, simply add to that. Um, now, if this technology seems like it's something that might be a good fit for your network, I'd like to just point out our uh, eval program. Uh, we really like to make it possible for everyone to try our products firsthand. I think it's a very experiential product, and we love to just get it in your hands and see what you think of it. So we uh, make all of our products available for a free evaluation. Uh, no strings attached. We'll send you out a handful of units, and you can try them out on your network. It takes about uh, 15, 20 minutes to get them spun up and to uh, experience the core features. And we also do make uh, support resources available for that evaluation. So if you have any questions or need assistance uh, deploying the network, we're happy to help you out with that as well. Uh, we do, of course, have the uh, Meraki MR12 eval AP that we're going to be sending out to everyone in the audience. And that's a great way to, uh, to try out the system. But if you want to try out some of the other hardware models or see what it's like to deploy uh, a slightly larger network, maybe light up a few classrooms, let us know. We'd be happy to send you out a few units. Now with that, we have uh, a, a few minutes left for Q&A, and I know there are uh, a number of questions in the audience for Steve. So uh, at this point, please ask any questions you have over the uh, chat interface, and both uh, Steve and I will do our best answer them. 